Hi there again, I'm Felix Hernandez and I will be your host for this masterclass with Affinity Photo. Uh, this is our second lesson of four and if you are here for the first time, I will recommend you to go back to lesson one so you have a better idea about what we are doing here. Today we are going to be working in Affinity Photo with a couple of images that I took of this little robot uh, by the way, his name is uh, Banksy. Uh, but before we jump into creating our second image, as in the first lesson, I will show you a little bit of what I did in the photo production. So let's go and I will explain you while watching this video. So again, you can see me here just putting together our second robot. This is Banksy, and again, I'm using this rig, mostly used for stop motion animation. And uh, this is uh, Banksy weights a little bit more, so I just added a little bit more weight in the back. And now you can see I'm using like these uh, devices. I don't know even the name in Spanish, but they are kind of, uh, you know, lifters that they use in, mostly in laboratories. But they are really handy when you want to, you know, place things in different heights. This is just a matter of taking your time to do a really nice composition. By the way, you are seeing it in landscape mode because the video, but uh, you will see that the final files, the photo was taken in portrait mode, uh, meaning vertical. So you, you will not see the, these uh, lifters in the side because it's a vertical shot. I'm trying to hide as much as I can the rig of the robot you can see a little bit, but I mean, we can take care of that in post-production or I don't care if we leave it that way. And again, we are setting the lights. It's the same light as in lesson one, just a backlight, a hair light. And here we have the top light with the grid, come with the softbox. And I'm adding a second light, uh, sorry, I'm adding a fourth light to the right. It's, called, it's also a LED light, it's called a focus light. It has a lens in the front, so you can really focus the beam of light in any part of the scene. So you can see here what each of the lights is doing. And of course, it's also finding the right ratio, it means the relationship between the the lights, the distance, and the power of the lights uh, into your scene. For creating the image, I decided to take two photos. You can see here both of them. And the reason why I took two photos is because the small light that is coming from the top left, the small light, the small LED light, the hair light, I like how it, it defined these highlights in the robot and in the spray cans. Uh, but uh, it was also casting a really strong shadow in the floor. So I took a second photo just without that light. You can see the difference in the photo of the right. And uh, later in Affinity Photo, you are going to see how I'm going to mix uh, these uh, two lights. Uh, in fact, when uh, taking the second photo, I move a little bit the robot, the head of the robot, but it doesn't matter. I'm, I just want the floor, you know, the ground uh, without the shadow. So we are going to be mixing those in a finished photo and making other cool stuff uh, like uh, adding color to the cans and uh, other stuff. So, okay, let's go. Great, now we are back in my computer and here we have our two files. Remember, they are raw files, so we are going to grab them into Affinity Photo. So two of them, here we go. And because we are working with raw files, they are going to be opened in the develop persona. Okay, so here we have one 
And here we have the second one. Let's start with this one. In the first lesson, we already went with the general adjustments. So I'm going to go faster in here. So I'm just going to the basics. And I think I'm just going to take a little away a little bit of contrast, add a little bit of clarity. Let me go down and maybe shadows and highlights. I'm going to take away some shadows and take away some of the highlights. We are going to um, change the color profile. Remember, this one is good for uh, digital devices and sharing in internet, but we are going to work with the standard Adobe RGB. And let me see, I think now we're going to details. And I'm going to add a little bit of detail, maybe around there. Going back to basics. And I'm okay. So now the question is how we apply uh, these setups to the second image. So here you have something called presets. So you can just go and click here and add a new preset. Let's call this one a uh, robot bank C. And now I'm going to select my second image. I'm just going to look here, you know, for the same preset, click it, and there we go. We have the same preset for one and for, for both, both of, of, the, of the photos. Just I didn't match the, the profile, so I'm just going to change this one. So now we have the same two adjustments for both of the both of the photos. So I think I'm okay with that. And we are going to go now to the photo persona. So we have to develop. But before, just remember that we are going to open these images. Right now, they are set as a pixel. So if we want to make further changes in the develop persona, we will not could do them. So it's better to open them as a raw layer. So at any time, we can come back to the developer persona to keep uh, fine-tuning our image if we need so. So just make sure that both of them are in raw layer embedded. So now we're going to develop this one. Now we are in, in photo persona and we are going to develop as well this one. So now what I want to do is to have both of my files in just one of the files. So I'm going to take this photo and just control or command C with the layer and I'm going to apply it here control or command V. So now we have one and two, one and two. And this is going to be the main file. So let's, let's, let's name it like base. Okay. And what I'm seeing is um, Overall, I like the image, but I think it's uh, too bright, uh, the entire image. And maybe I just want to keep um, those values in the center and make a little bit darker the, the surrounding image. So this is a good example just to show you that we can go back to uh, the develop persona and make uh, different versions uh, of this photo. And this is really, really simple. So I'm going to go back uh, by just clicking two times in the icon of the image. So there we go. We are back again in the develop persona. So for this version, ah, of course, let me cancel this. For that, we will have to duplicate the layer, right? Because we want to keep this like, let's call it base, light, sorry, light, and I'm going to just duplicate it, duplicate, and we are going to call this base dark. Now we go. Now if we hit two times in the, in the image, 
we are back to the develop persona and now maybe for this one I'm going to make it darker maybe something like that um, let me go to the shadows and highlights maybe something like that something like that maybe a little bit more I don't want to go too far and I think I'm also going to take away a little bit of that saturation around there and if I'm okay then I'm going to go to develop and now we are back into the photo persona and see what we have done we have the dark base and the light base so I have two versions of the same image so that's why it's handy in the develop persona opening the photos as the raw file output great so now I want to combine these two images the, the dark base and the light base I'm just going to disable this one okay so I have the light and the dark I'm gonna leave it this way and I'm going to make a layer mask to the dark base and remember that painting with black or with white you can reveal or hide what's in that image so I'm just going to grab a regular brush I'm going to make it bigger and softer maybe around there I'm going to take my flow to 10% just to have around there to have a little bit more of control and I'm going to paint with black over the layer mask so I'm starting to hide part of that layer just what I want more light right because we are revealing the layer that is below if we hide this one you can see what we have masked if I paint with black sorry with white I'm going to recover part of that layer but what we want painting with black is just to hide a little bit of that and I can even lower the opacity maybe maybe around there if I'm okay with this I'm going to grab these two layers and put them in a folder I'm just going to call it base so now what about our third image let me put it on top and let's see what we have so all I want of this image is the foreground because in this one I have these shadows that for me are really distracting so what I'm going to do is another layer mask grab my gradient tool and I'm going maybe from here okay to you can see here to here maybe maybe something like that and that's it I'm going to open my uh, group and I'm going to take this one on top so now inside of our group you can see we have our foreground and our vignette and the original image so it's one two and three okay now we are going to add some texture to the foreground and for that I'm going to open an image that I downloaded from a photo library I cannot share this one with you because I don't have the rights to do so but I'm just grabbing the, the this TIFF file and I'm just placing it in Affinity, in Affinity Photo so let me just go down 
I'm going to take it outside from our folder just to keep things in order and I'm going to make it bigger mm. I'm going low to lower the opacity just to see what I'm doing something like that I don't have any problem if I just squish it because it's just texture maybe something like that a little bit bigger maybe something like that I'm going to squeeze it a little bit more just trying to make that the perspective make sense and you have I think at this point, guess how we're going to integrate this. We are going to make another layer mask. And again, with our gradient tool, maybe for this one, I'm going from here to maybe just about there, right? Of course, we have some texture that has gone on over the robot and, and some of the cans. But again, we are going just to grab our brush, small brush, and we are going to, sorry, I did a new layer. We are going to paint over our layer mask, right? but not with white, we want to hide, so we are going to paint with black. Uh, I'm gonna leave the flow there. I'm just going to make the, the brush softer for smooth transitions. And now I'm going to start painting, maybe a little softer and bigger, something like that. And you can take your time and do it like, with more time, to have a perfect image, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to make it like faster, smaller, a little bit harder. You get the idea. And by the way, sorry if you hear a dog barking at the distance. It's not my dog, it's my neighbor's dog. And he decided to start barking right now. So it has been a little bit difficult to record these lessons due to all the noise I have, not just in the day, but as well at night, like right now. But hopefully you are not hearing too much. Okay, I think that's enough. Maybe a little bit more here in the shadows. I think that I'm also, I'm also going to blur uh, this texture because um, it doesn't match with the depth of field of the original image. Right, so I'm just going to blur it a little bit. So now I'm going to select the image, okay, not the layer mask, the image, and I'm going for filter, blur, and apply a Gaussian blur. How much? Well, that depends on you. I'm going here around one, maybe a little bit more. No, that's too much. Around there, and I'm going to apply it. As well, you could play with the blending mode. So not, right now we have it in normal, but if you want to grab some of the values of the image we have below, okay, maybe you could play with multiply, with overlay, or with soft light. In my case, I think I'm going with overlay. And this is just a way, quick way to add some texture to our foreground. I can even put it inside the folder. 
because all of this is our base, right? Perfect. Now we are going to add some color to the spray can. I'm just going to do one and I think I'm going to fast forward the video because it's going to be the same for each one of the cans, spray cans. So I will start grabbing the shape tool. I'm just going to grab, you have different options here. I'm just going to grab the rectangle and um, let me find like the most complex spot. I think it's going to be this one. So I'm just going to make a rectangle about here and it can be any color. Now we have our rectangle. If we go to the color and click twice, we can change it to any color we want. Let's say we're going to work with this blue. So let's close it. So I'm going to disable the view, just hide it for a moment. And in the first lesson, you can go back. We went and make some masks, some selections with the uh, pen tool, this one here, right? Now we're going to do a different way. So we are going to grab the uh, selection brush, this one here. And here it depends uh, how big and how small you do your brush. So I'm going to start with a small brush. And I'm going to try to select all this white area, maybe doing it a little bit bigger. Something like that. Don't worry too much if you go over some areas you don't want, because we are going to fix that later. So if you click Option, you will select Minus, and if you don't click anything, you will select more, right? So now I'm clicking Option. So this is Minus, okay, something like that. Here, I'm going to make it smaller. So I want to select this area and this area, but I don't want this, so Minus. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Here, I want this area. I don't want this. And of course, the hand. But what we're going to do is to refine the selection. So we have here this bottom. So let's click it. It might take a while. So everything that it's in red is not mask or is mask, mask, depending how you see it. But we want to change the, the color of the can. So you have different ways to view it. Here we have it in overlay, but we can go to black and white. This is just a way to see what we are masking, what we are selecting. We can feather, we can smooth our selection, make bigger our selection, the borders of, of our selection. So here again, you have the size of the brush. So now we are going to go over the hand, just like this. So we want to take this out of the selection, right? And it did a fine job, but we have some transition parts. It's not completely red. So maybe instead of working in matte, we can go for foreground and with a smaller brush, let me zoom in, something like that. Of course, working with minus, this is what we don't want to select, sorry. Something like that. And there we go. So I'm not going to do it perfect. So we don't have time. But you get the idea. So then, okay. 
with option and I think it's looking good let me go here as well sorry but don't worry too much because I'm gonna show you how I, we can even make a better selection I mean this is kind of tricky because we have uh, we don't have a lot of contrast between the different cans the more contrast you have in the image the uh, easier you can de do this kind of uh, selection but for this one it's perfect so I'm if I'm okay with it maybe I can uh, feather a little bit the selection just a little bit and smoother something like that and I'm going to apply my selection okay so now we have our area selected and in our rectangle we are just going to do a layer mask so I'm going to reveal it so now you can see we have uh, that rectangle only in the selection we have made at this point we can go Control or command D to deselect and now our rectangle is in in a normal blending mode but we can try maybe with multiply or overlay soft light think that for this one I'm going to go with overlay it's perfect and the good thing in Affinity Photo is that we can make multiple masks through one of our uh, subjects or images or elements let's say that way this is a rectangle so not, right now I have one mask but I'm going to do another one okay I want it here okay so I have my element my mask and the second mask I have done so maybe this mask I want to go just over the image and I think that yes for example here I have some blue in the finger maybe this mask is just for details so remember that with masks I'm going to grab my uh, uh, brush tool and I'm going to paint with black smaller brush in the areas that I want to hide by overall our first mask did a really really nice job maybe a smoother brush this transition area I think it looks great maybe here okay let me go to the top of the can here is a little bit messy so maybe here that's right and I mean you can spend more time here but overall I think it's great and we can go even farther and make one more mask okay and for this one I'm going to grab again the gradient tool and maybe I'm just going to apply this rectangle from here to here just to have like a variation in the bottom that it will look more saturated because we have less light and in the top more saturated change it maybe something like that so inside of inside of our rectangle we have one two and three masks you can see what each one of the masks is doing okay one two and three so I'm gonna close this one and we can go farther maybe we want to make uh, um, some uh, level adjustments or um, maybe some curves okay it's inside our re rectangle sorry it's inside our, our re rectangle and to put it in top and this will only affect not to the overall image just to a rectangle so maybe I'm going to push the highlights and bring down the shadows a little bit 
to have more saturation. Maybe something like that. Okay. And also, what we could do is maybe we want to change the color of this. We can still do so. Just select the, the rectangle, go to the color, double tap there, and now you can change to any color you want. Okay, maybe kind of a magenta, something like that, close, and there you have it. So the good thing is that everything is editable and you can change it at any point. So I will fast forward and start working in each one of the cans. I grabbed the more difficult one because there was the, the arm. Um, so the others, I think, are going to be uh, more easy and faster. Well, I'm back. That took me about 30 minutes. Uh, but as you can see, I have now all my cans with a different color. Have them here. And I put them all in all. Each of the colors is in its own group or folder. So, for example, if I open this folder, I have the rectangle, the layer masks, and for each one, I did the same. Okay, so again, uh, if I want to change the color of this uh, yellow can, I will just go to the rectangle, click two times in the color tab, and I can change my color. Okay, and as well, I want yellow, and as well, I can keep editing my masks, playing around with them. Uh, also, I went and saving, I call it Robot uh, 2 Lesson. So I had not saved anything. And maybe some of you are just saying, hey, you have to remove the, the rig of the robot. I, we did that for the first lesson. In lesson one, we moved the, the rig away. Really simple, so I'm not going to do it again to not repeat myself. So next, we are going to add some lights to the robot that, I mean, we did that as well in the first lesson, but I think that's the fun part, so let's do it again. So on top of everything, I'm going to create a new layer, and um, this is going to be a mix of yellow and also white, white uh, light. But first of all, I'm going to start with the yellow, just a regular brush, I'm going to make it... Um, I'm going to make it uh, maybe around here, but softer. We also saw how to make harder or softer or bigger, or smaller, a brush in the first lesson. So I'm just going to put a light here. That's perfect. And in the same layer, I'm going to put a little bit smaller, a second light. So now we can go to the blending modes and maybe uh, Color Dodge looks kind of cool, but it's kind of an evil robot. So no, I think I'm going to leave it like in maybe lighter. Okay, I'm going to add a new layer. I'm going to make bigger the brush. This is going to be like a general light, but much, much softer. Something like that. Let me zoom out. Maybe around there. Okay, and for this one, I'm going with uh, maybe overlay. You see how it's changing. Now it's glowing. And I'm going to make a third layer, but now I'm going to paint with black white. Smaller, maybe around there, one and two, 
And maybe for this one we can go with overlay as well. And maybe even a fourth layer with a much, much smaller brush with white. This is going to be like the highlight. Maybe there and there. And lowering the opacity. Okay. Sorry. Uh, great, so I'm going to take all these layers in one group and I'm going to name it Ice. As well, in the first lesson, we did some reflections. I'm just going to do a small one here. These little details add to the story to the image, so I'm creating a new layer and now painting with yellow, again the brush and this is just going to be a light, it's a, it's a light that is reflecting in his uh, body, part of his body and I'm going to change it to maybe overlay and we are going to do a layer mask and now painting with black mm, around here no that's too too hard softer softer something like that you could also add a little bit of lure I like to have control over the image so we are just highlighting that area we could do it as well I'm creating a new layer so let me grab uh, maybe around there and again I'm just going to paint here in the border And I'm going for overlay. Now I'm going to blur. But now I'm going to make a different uh, kind of blur. Now I'm going for motion blur. Here you can manage the degrees, right? So I'm going to do it just horizontal. This is with zero. Extended, maybe there. I'm going to apply. And lowering the opacity, just a little highlight over there. So, and I can take these two and as well in a group and name them highlights. So we always have control on our image. Again, maybe we want to do an animation or have different versions for our image. I think at the, in the eyes, let me see. I want to lower the opacity of these ones. Yes, yeah, something like that. Just to show a little bit of depth. Again, I think that's okay. I'm going to save again the image. Great. Now we are going to give the final touch to this image. I'm going to bring a PNG file. So here we have it. This is just a transparent uh, image. It has transparency. And as well, this was from an image bank. Uh, by the way, you can just rotate your image in the corners of the handles, scale it, and let's say we want something like that. New York makes sense, but 
the original image was in black and white. So I'm going to, let me see, where do I have my image? Uh, I put it down here. I'm going to put it on top of everything. There we go. Let's call it New York. New. And the easiest way to change the color will be to go in uh, effects, selecting the layer, going to effects. And here you have different options. We have here color overlay, gradient overlay. I want color, I just want a, a solid color. So I'm going to grab this. Right now it's in black. I can double tap and choose any color. Um, yeah, a red color, a little bit lighter. It's almost a magenta. I like that one. So now you want you, you can close. And I want to match the depth uh, of this text. This uh, New York graffiti is really well defined. On our can, it's slightly out of focus. So I'm going to try to match. I'm going to filter, blur. Gaussian blur. And I think that's enough. And um, our New York graffiti, it's over some elements we don't want. So, layer mask, our brush, painting with black over the layer mask. Let me just go down here. I went to back. So remember now with white and we recover that area. And I think I'm going to make a second layer mask. And with the gradient tool, just to add some variation. There we go. Now we are going to take our mesh. This is a mesh uh, warp tool, but for our image, sorry, okay. And if you click on this, you will have some handles. And I'm trying to just adapt a little bit to the shape of the can. Just to give it a little bit more of realism going al along with the shape of the can. And if you are okay with it, you have to apply. There we go. And I should have done this before uh, playing with the with the layer mask because of course I have moved it. So I'm just going to take this layer mask away. I'm going to do a new, a new one. And again, painting with black. Again, it's not perfect. But you get the idea. I think I'm going to lower the opacity around there. And I think we are ready to add, think a little bit more of a vignette and play uh, with the curves and labels. Let me do on top of everything, I'm going to do a new layer. Sorry, not a, it's a layer adjustment. First, I think I want to play with um, curves. It's going to affect all of our colors. It's in master. Here you can play with the channels individually, but it is a, this is an overall adjustment. So a little bit of contrast, lighter, and a little bit darker. 
this is affecting all of the layers because it's on top okay, before and after and as well I think I'm going to make some labels here and just playing with the mid-tones this is at your taste I'm going to add HSL, hue, saturation and lumin luminosity so I'm going to saturate the image just a little bit from there and make it a little bit darker all the colors it's trying to compensate the saturation okay and overall I like it I think that the foreground is um, still taking too much uh, of the tension so I will create a new layer Okay, I'm going to fill it with black. And I'm going to make a layer mask. And with the gradient tool, I'm going to apply it until there. Just about there. And I think that's it. We have end with our second image. You can still go and play it around, maybe adding one message or graffiti to each one of the of the spray cans, even to the robot, playing with more uh, light effects. So perfect. Let's stop here. So great, we have created our second image and we have two more to go coming in the next lessons. I hope you have enjoyed this lesson and see you in the next one. Adios.